Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Ted Blank. I am one of the travel advisors here at Travel Leaders, and um, I'm excited to have our guest here for this month's River Cruise webinar. We have Mary Margaret with AMA Waterways, and today we are going to take a look at their cruises through Paris and Normandy. And so, Mary Margaret, I'm going to let you go ahead and get started. I am going to try to get us live on Facebook but um, you're ready to go ahead and get started. And for folks who um, are joining us, thanks so much for coming. You can um, ask any questions you have in the chat for the question and answer piece, and we will um, let you, we'll either save them up for the end or we'll answer them as we go, depending on how, um, how it seems. So I'll kind of monitor the question and answer box and the chat box, but welcome everybody. and. Mary Margaret, we are ready for you to take it away. Okay, welcome everyone. And this is this is one of my very favorite uh, journeys uh, that we do. It's, it's the Paris and Normandy uh, itinerary as well as uh, the impressions. So let's get started. I just want to show you this one, this one screen because these are our ships, and as Rudy's quote on the right states, those. Every single one of these ships is paid for. They're ours. We own them all. And the last 10 ships that we put in the water, we paid for in cash. So you're, when you're working with Market Square, your, your travel advisor there, and you're working with Ted, you are, and they're working with Ama Waterways. Believe me, they're working with a very financially sound company. So these are our French itineraries that we do. We now have five itineraries in France. Uh, we do the Paris and Normandy, obviously. It's Paris to Paris. The impressions of the Seine is actually a one way. So you, you go Paris up to Hansfleur, or you could start in Hansfleur and go back down to, uh, down to Paris. And with a pre or a post, the pre can be, or the post can be in St. Milo, uh, where you will visit Mont Saint Michel, and of course, Paris. Uh, we have the essence of Burgundy and Provence, which is one of my, I cannot wait to do this one because it will start either in Chalon or it will start in Arles. And the pre or the post is either in Geneva or it is in Barcelona. And then of course the colors of Provence from the south, uh, we do Avignon to uh, Arles, to, I'm sorry, to Avignon. And Again, we do Nice as a pre or a post, or we do Paris as a pre or post. And then of course the Taste of Bordeaux, which is on the Western part of France, right? Now, with all of these itineraries, if you wanted to start in the North of France and experience that and go to the South of France, you could do that because all of these itineraries start and end on a Thursday. So they're very easily being able to connect which is one of the beauties of our French itineraries. So you could actually spend three, or four or five weeks in France if you'd like to on one of our beautiful ships. So we're gonna talk about the North of France, which is Paris and Normandy and the impressions of the Seine in Paris, all right? And what you're looking at right now is the picture of Giverny, of, of, of Verna. So let's get started here. Um, these are some of the beautiful cities towns and villages that you are going to be able to visit. So with this one, which is the impressions, which is one way, you're going to go up to Le Havre, or you're going to start in Le Havre, where you're going to have the beautiful opportunity of doing Mount St. Michel. And I'll show you some pictures of Mount St. Michel in a minute. But again, St. Milo, three nights, and then we, we take you over to uh, Le Havre. And with this itinerary, you will do, you will have the opportunities if you choose the beaches. So if say, for an example, you are not doing the, this, the Seine on the Paris Normandy one, but you want to see um, the beaches, you, you still give you that opportunity with this. So this is our St. Milo package, right? which is a pre or a post, so you could start in either one. So, you know, St. Milo is on the Brit is in Brittany, and it's a beautiful, historic walled city, all right? Um, and from there, we go into Hansler, right? So you will uh, 
and get to see Mount St. Michelle as well, which is right here. And it's absolutely beautiful. We take, we used to be able to take cars, could go up there, but not anymore. And that's a, that, as you see this right here, that's a road, but it's only via bus now, or you can walk it, right? And it's this, this incredible historic abbey. Oh. And back oh. in the day when the high tides came in, it was completely cut off from land. Yes, now, absolutely. Now there's a, a causeway that the buses <clears throat> can go on to take you out there, but it's it's one of those you know places in the world that is as beautiful as the tourist brochures make it yeah. out to be, and, and and really highlight of Normandy. Um, and so by by doing the pre cruise uh, hotel package in Saint Malo, you can have the opportunity to visit this and explore it, and it's cool. It's really yeah, cool. it is. It is really cool. And this is the ship that you would be on, and then the impressions. It's on the uh, the Seine one where you are doing Paris to Normandy, back to Paris, you are on uh, the Amalira, one of our smaller ships. We have uh, four smaller ships in France. Uh, I like to call them my, my original recipes. They are 360 feet long, right? They're still 37 feet wide. They are all French balcony. They are 170 square feet of cabin space, no matter where you are on that ship. They have a, they do not have a swimming pool like our Ama Christina that does the colors of Provence, okay? uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but it has a large jacuzzi, which is used uh, all the time. Um, and it also has all the other amenities. You know, we get with Ama Waterways, you have complimentary Wi Fi 24 7. You could be sitting anywhere on that ship and be connected to the outside world, right? Uh, we spend more money on our bandwidth to keep you connected versus our fuel. That's how energy efficient our ships are. Uh, when Rudy uh, has designed them, and Rudy Schneider is one of our co-founders as well as our president, he designed our ships, right? Um, and beautiful dining area, beautiful chef's table, and there's no, it's alternative dining for you and there's no upcharge, right? So pretty much we are inclusive. We're not all inclusive in the sense where, um, as far as the bar tab, but we do have sparkling wine with breakfast. We have beer, wine, and soda unlimited free, free flowing with lunch and dinner. We have our sip and sale, which is our cocktail, a cocktail hour, an hour before dinner, where it's an open bar. You know, my bartenders will have a specialty drink of the evening, but you can have your choice, right? And then, of course, we, you know, have all the wine that you can drink at dinner. Uh, and I like to say to my husband, I only have one glass of wine. They just keep filling it. And don't be afraid. <laughs> don't be afraid to take it outside and, and go on to the sun deck, go on to the lounge for the nightly entertainment, go into back to your, your um, stateroom. And every single stateroom has a magic drawer. And that magic drawer has a corkscrew, bottle opener, and two wine glasses. Because you're in Europe, and on this itinerary, you're in France. France. So, if, yeah, yeah. The beautiful if, wine. If you can't find a good glass of wine, shame on you. Yes. I can remember doing this itinerary, and my husband and a friend of ours was with us, another couple. And they, they were on a journey. They said, we are going to try and get the most inexpensive table wine and see what it tastes like. <laughs> yeah, well, let me tell you, it tastes, it tasted like a, you know, a, a $75 bottle of wine. I mean, this is amazing what you can get. Uh, anyway, this, I think, I think though, that is a good, that is a good contrast to kind of point out for folks who maybe have been on an ocean cruise before, you know, there's kind of the enforcer standing there when you get back on the ship, looking yeah. to kind of get your bottle of wine and here you're welcome to bring your own wine on board and enjoy it in your stateroom. Yes, and open, you know, up, and, shows, open up a glass of wine and relax. Yes, absolutely. And you know, and we also do not stop you from bringing that bottle of wine if you want to try it out over dinner or over lunch. You know, or send you miss out on the uh, well, well selected. Uh, lunch oh yeah. Do, so. Yes, because they're all regional and they are changed on a nightly basis. Believe me. So, all right, let's start our journey and. Yeah, well, this is where the English Channel is. And, and, you know, I think the, uh, I'm trying to think of the movie that was kind of made up here. Uh, it was recent, too. Um, 
Dunkirk? Isn't that a, I think that's in the, the English Dun Channel Dun area. Dunkirk is north. Yeah. North. Right. Yeah. Um, so anyway, this is La Havre, which is a magnificent, beautiful city. And we, we dock here and you can have your choice. Okay. And again, and when we say choices, choices are free, options cost you money, right? Remember that because every time we stop, there is a tour and you will have to choose sometimes between a hiking excursion, a biking excursion, because we have 26 bikes on every single one of our ships, except on the Doro and, and Vietnam, right? Or we also might give you a choice, for like for an example, in La Havre, you may have the choice of going to Normandy. You may have the choice of being in La Havre or again, a, or a Hans Lur. So again, choices. And of course the beaches. Um, they, it's absolutely the most moving experience that I've had. Um, and you look, you know, as you're on top and looking down onto the beaches, you, you say, that's how everybody, that's why we lost so many people. I mean, so many young men, um, it's amazing. They, what the Germans, the bunkers that the Germans had up on, up on that ledge up here. Uh, all over and yeah, just, just I mean, no, it's amazing. It, it, it really is. A, it, it really is. I would say the you know probably the highlight of this particular itinerary. And it's hard to pick highlights because there are so many. But spending that day exploring the the D Day landing beaches and um, it, it's a it's a big area. It's it's a sprawling area, so it's tough to visit on your own. Um, and so there's a really well designed excursion that gives you a chance to see the highlights um, and and. This is that artificial harbor that they built that no longer um, exists, but you really get a chance to see all the things that, that made the Normandy invasion um, ultimately a success. You'll get a chance to experience them. And then we also visit the cemetery mm -hmm. and it, it is that it's also amazing. Very mm -hmm. So it's one of your choices. And then of course you've got Hunfler. The beautiful, really beautiful. That's, that picture doesn't do it justice, but it's a, no. the colors are so vibrant. And I forget if it was Monet or um, who, who painted Mont Fleur. And it's, a, it's really a beautiful, charming little fishing village. It is. And then we go into Kalak. Uh, my French is terrible. <laughs> oh, Quarterback. Quarterback. Quarterback and Poe, yeah. Yes. Um, and in this in this place in, in Beilu, you will actually have, because it's in Normandy, it's the Normans, and you will actually see the, the in, in this particular beautiful, beautiful city, um, the tapestry. And I, I know you've seen this city before, but the tapestry is a whole, it's, it's, it's immense. It's absolutely immense. And it's a, it depicts the, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, the battles. It's, it's yeah. Sorry, of course, the garbage truck showed up just as we started talking about. Uh, <laughs> you know, but for for those who are history buffs, if you remember in in 1066, William, who was the Duke of Normandy, conquered England, and um, he won at a battle at a place called Hastings. And so the Bay of Tapestry, which the photograph or the little picture of, is this immense hand woven tapestry that yeah. tells the story of the battle. Um, and quite interesting. And of course, William's descendant um, still sits on the throne of England. So um, that was a pretty monumental moment in history, the 1066. Yeah. He yes. was from Bayo. And it, it is quite lovely. The, yeah, it's the beautiful tapestry. City otherwise, too. Quite a pretty town. Yes, it is. It, it, unfortunately, as I always say, we never spend enough time. And in any of these beautiful cities, we never do. <laughs> and of course, this is the, like a Norman village, it's different than some of the other places in, in France. You could see it's it's more, it's got the wood and the- um, Timbered houses, yeah. The timbered, the timbered houses with the stucco. So- In, in Normandy, Normandy is kind of famous for two, two culinary items. They're famous for camembert cheese and- Ooh. Calados, which is apple brandy. And so 
I'm sure the opportunity to taste those will present itself as you explore Normandy as well. Oh yes, it does. I'm bored actually. Yeah. <laughs> and then we visit many chateaux and we get um, uh, a tour of the gardens here. This is, you actually, at, at this particular area, the chateau, you will meet the head gardener and you will have a walking tour of these beautiful, beautiful gardens, okay? And then of course, Rouen. And, you know, this is where Joan of Arc was burned at the stake. Um, and what surprised me so much about uh, Rouen, and I could, I could spend hours in this beautiful little town, um, is the church of Joan of Arc. I, I expected it to be more Gothic and cathedral-like uh, that you're seeing on, on the left. It's not, it's very, very modern. Very modern, yeah. Very modern. And I, I was kind of, I stood there and I can remember saying to myself, wow, I never thought that this would be modern. But yes, this is where she was burned at the stake. Hmm. And the, re the rest of the city is very Gothic and historic. So it kind of yes. stands yeah. out. Yeah. Yes, and I love that clock and the archway. The, I, you know, when you're, whenever you're traveling, which expands your horizons and you make, you kind of think about the architecture and the architecture that we have in, in the United States. We have some beautiful, beautiful architectural sites in this country. But when you look at the European architecture, like under, that archway under the clock, you think this was done what in 1500s, 1600s, 1400s, and you think, how did they do that? Yeah, we we have the technology, we have the tools, we have the equipment to be able to to do this, in probably less than half the time, you know, ten percent of the time that they it took there. But yes, it's just amazing to look at, just look at the architecture. And then, of course, we have. Ted, you're going to have to teach me French. I'll have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my French teacher, I'm sure, is spinning in her grave. But, uh. <laughs> um, and this is another um, kind of a, was a chateau, but it's also a fort, a fortress that you will have the opportunity, if you so choose, you can actually, we have a hike that goes up there. And the view, the view from the Seine from there is pretty Incredible. Pretty impressive. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. And again, um, for folks who were historians, um, this is where the German Field Marshal Rommel had his headquarters in that chateau right in the foreground there. That's where his headquarters were during the Battle of Normandy. Wow, thank you. I didn't know that. You haven't watched the movie The Longest Day and you're planning to go to Normandy. Definitely, definitely watch that. It's a very historically accurate movie and it really sets the scene for the trip very well. Ah, and then of course, Caverny. This is you know, Monet's place. I mean, and the gardens really do look like this. This they is, do. they do. I, and you can see why he didn't want to leave. Oh yeah. yeah. And just kind of an FYI, if Caverny is definitely on your bucket list, you need to travel with Ted or any of your associates that you work with at Market Square between March 31st when it opens and October 31st when it closes. So any time prior to pre or post that those dates, that it is closed. Uh, but it's absolutely gorgeous to walk um, around there and just to also to visit the house, you know, that's there. And then of course you've got Vernon. Um, and it's, it's it's just such a, a lovely place just to kind of even sit, you know, and just kind of look and visit with you within yourself. And then this be as we're heading into Paris, we visit this chateau, Agnet, and we we do get to go into this. It's it's actually a, um, a beautiful working chateau. And this is another beautiful cathedral that reminds you so much of. Um, you know, the, the Notre Dame, in, Notre Dame in, in, uh, yeah, in, in Paris. But look at the roof. This is definitely Norman. It is not 
um, any part of like the, the, you, when you'll notice the di different patterns in the roofs in the various different regions. So this is North France. So and this is the type of roofs that you will find in, in the Normandy region. And of course, then we go to Paris. And you know, one of the most beautiful cities in the world, one of the many, I should say. And we do use the Renaissance um, in Paris. We have several hotels, but this is just happens to be one of them. Um, and it's right in the heart. It's what the walking distance of everything in Paris. And of course, this, this one you would have to get a tour and we do offer as optional tours as either a pre or a post in Paris. We do have some optional tours such as um, going into Montreal, going into doing the, um, oh dear. Versailles. We do offer Versailles, but not, it, it, that would be a total, not really. I mean, you can do Versailles uh, on a, a tour of your own that you would arrange, Ted, for them. Okay. But, um, what's the can can? I'm trying to remember. Oh my God. Oh, the um, Moulin Rouge. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Moulin, <laughs> Rouge. Moulin Rouge. Rouge. You, you will get a definite city tour. Uh, and then you have some, some choices that you, I should say, some options that you can choose from. Um, that you know, many people just want to be in. in in Paris and just walk to some of the museums, to do the Eiffel Tower, et cetera. So again, that's why we offer the optional pre or post tours besides your city tour. Okay. So that, that particular church there is called the Sacre Coeur or the Sacred Heart. And it's, um, it's really about the only place besides the Eiffel Tower that you can get a panoramic view of the city of Paris. Um, yeah. Paris is a pretty flat city. So it's one of the few um, mountain or bluff tops that you can see from. And it's it's got its own little own little town right there. It's kind of yeah. which is Montmartre quite is kind of the artist's quarter. Yeah, very very bohemian feeling. And you get there by a cable car. Yeah, you have to take a little funicular up the hill to get there. Yeah. That's right. What, what an odd hill. And that's the little town, of course. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It's very very French. <laughs> Right in the heart of Paris. Yes, right well, in the, the heart of Paris. Kind of in the heart of Paris, yeah. And then this is something that um, is is in Paris right now, and it will be in Paris for several years. It is Illum the Illuminaires, where it's all it's pictures of the artists Monet and, and other artists, uh, pictures of them in this museum. It's, it's only pictures now. For an example. We have, um, I'm in the Chicago area, and we have the Van Gogh, um, at the Art, in, the yeah, Art Institute here of too, like this fall. Yeah, and we also have, in, in a, one of our suburbs called Oak Brook, we have the Sistine Chapel like this. So this is the new way of showing the art to the people in, instead of, you, but they're almost full life. And, this is also, uh, they have the illuminaires in uh, the Bordeaux area in a submarine that you can huh. visit when you're in Mont with us. Yes. Yeah, and these we, paintings are they're, they're projections of them on uh, huge screens in the dark. Uh, yes. They yes. come to life. And yes, I was supposed to go see this in March of last year. Uh, but I haven't been to see it yet. I wonder why. I wonder what <laughs> Next year. Actually, maybe <laughs> yeah. December. We'll see. So that's, uh, and then of course, Paris, uh, the, the symbol of Paris, of course. And so I just wanted to kind of tell you that we are restarting. We are returning to the rivers. I cannot wait. Uh, we start our season on July 3rd out the Douro. And then we uh, go into France starting in mid, you know, the 22nd of July. And the reason we're starting in Portugal and in France first, is because it's one country, all right? Portugal is a country we can meet every single one of the, their protocols, same way with France. And then the end of the month, we've got uh, the, the Danube and the Rhine, which of course have multiple countries that we have to meet the protocols for. And this is the, actually the website that if you're at all interested in what the 
travel updates are for us as far as us American, US citizens and Canadians. Um, they are posted there and we have updated Portugal. We have just updated Germany. All right. So they are, they are continually being updated. So no matter what country there it's in there that we that we happen to to touch base on that we have to beat the protocols for. We do have a solo traveler offer going on right now. It has been extended until the end of July. So if and now is the time to travel, really. Uh, there's some of the specials that are out there that Ted and your associate at Market Square can talk to you about. I mean, it, it's there for 21, right? And we are offering this single supplement of only 25% of the double for a balcony yeah, state room. Amazing. And then what's new? If you you know you have plans for next year, 23. Think about it. For the first time, we're offering some five night itineraries. We're doing two new itineraries for uh, 23. The cl the classical music. So if you love music, this is a beautiful opportunity for you to visit from Budapest to Vienna, and concerts that you will experience. And going into the the opera house in Budapest and having a private concert in the Schoenberg Palace and a private concert at the opera house, one of the opera houses in Vienna. I mean, amazing. And then of course, another five-nighter that we're offering is the Majestic Capitals. Again, Budapest to Vienna. And land packages, this is the one I really want to do is Krakow, Poland. So if you're either ending or, or um, starting in Budapest, you could do a pre or post in Krakow. And then of course, we also are offering Salzburg, the new one. And then for those Christmas market junkies, which there are many out there, believe it or not, uh, for the first time in 23, we are doing the gems, which is the Southern part of the Danube. So we're Christmas market, winter markets into Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia. So again, this is exciting. And what we're also doing for 23 is two weekers. So you could start in Dilsolven, and end in Giroux, Romania, or you could start in Giroux and end in Dissolvent. So you could do a two week of Christmas markets. What an amazing journey. And we are also offering a seven, we've got three seven river journeys. So if you missed out on doing a world cruise of 180 days, we can offer you a 45 or a 46 night journey and see Europe. I mean, really see Europe. So our summer one is there's still a little bit of availability. I think we have five or six cabins left on this one, but look at, you're gonna be visiting 14 countries. Look at the rivers that you're gonna be visiting. You wanna see Europe, you've got the time. Remember, you can work from anywhere in the world. Our Wi-Fi is, is free on every single one of those ships, all right? So you have summer, which is June 1st to July 17th. You could do spring. Again, it's a 45 nights and April 20th to June 4th. Again, you're doing seven rivers, 14 beautiful countries, right? A little bit different itinerary. And if you've done some of these countries or rivers in the past, let me tell you, the tours that we're offering you are, are, will be providing with for you are completely different. Some very special, special journeys and, and tours that we're doing. And then of course, we started autumn. And this one, I, this one is very intriguing to me because it's August 24th to October 10th. What a beautiful time Perfect. to be in Europe. I mean, beautiful time to be in Europe. Um, and again, we're doing the Dutch and Belgium waterways. So you'll get to do the do of the Netherlands and Belgium. And of course, the Rhine, the Moselle, the Danube, and going from France all the way again to Giro in Romania. Okay. And everything's included. I mean, you don't have to worry about a thing. All right. Your your transfers are included between and the ships to the very your luggage, all the all your gratuities, you know, your laundry. Uh, you've got, I mean, if you're 
the sparkling wine at breakfast. You've got the beer, wine, and soda with lunch and dinner. You've got your sip and sell and a cocktail hour before. So it's just as amazing. And like I said, we're doing some very special, special tours on each one of those. So if that's kind of in your bucket list of thinking, you know, instead of just going for seven nights, hmm, let's do this. But if you don't have 45 days or 46 days, we do have something to, else to offer you in just a second. But again, this particular the Seven Rivers, as well as any other itinerary for 23, we are doing 5% uh, savings. Okay. Now, this may change. It's only valid until June 30th, but that may change as well. But I don't know. I can't tell you. But I said back to backs. I talked about France. You can do a back to back in France. But Again, if you wanted to do France and you wanted to do the Rhine and say you only had 21 days, you could do that with us and do the various different rivers. We actually have, a, our res agents have an app that can put everything together for you. It's amazing. And we give you a 10% saving on your second cruise. Plus you will have your past passenger discount, which is $100 per person, okay? And any other promotions that are going on on those on those sailings. Okay, so talk to your advisor at uh, Market Square as well as for Ted. Okay, so and because you listened to me, <laughs> massacre French, <laughs> like, uh, absolutely massacre French. You book any 21, 22, or twenty three journey with us with your advisor at Market Square or with Ted, of course, by July 6th, all right? Gives you some time to think about it and talk, talk about it. I'll give you an additional $100 per person, okay? Off. And I'm open for questions. Can, can you go back, Mary Margaret, to that screen with the map of the itinerary? Like kind of towards the beginning. Oh sure. I thought we could kind of maybe that would help us kind of with the questions. But I think one of the first questions that people very commonly ask is when is the best time to go to Normandy? Um, mm -hmm. So well, I, I, I can answer. You can answer. Take your <laughs> take your. <laughs> um. Tell us when the season starts and when it ends. Maybe we can start with that. Well, it never ends. I mean, it really doesn't. I mean, we we sail from, um, actually, we're going to be starting to sail next year in France, the end of March. And it will go into, actually, for the first time, we are going to be doing for, uh, for France into December. Okay. We normally, We have normally stopped France the beginning to the middle of November, but we are actually going to sail longer. And again, France is very much like us as far as the Midwest. Climate. I mean, as far as climate. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't get the, the, the snow capacity as Chicago or Minneapolis does uh, or Wisconsin, uh, but it's still, it's brisk. I mean, I've been there in the end of March and it's, you know, it's spring. You have to expect maybe some spring showers. Um, I've been to Normandy in the end of October, first part of November, and it's been jacket weather. I mean, considering, look at what our our troops had to do endure in June. Yeah. I mean, the weather wasn't, you know. Terrible. It wasn't, it was awful. Yeah. It was terrible. Yeah. So again, I think if you look at the, if you look at a, um, a globe and you look at where you're located and kind of, Good the longitude latitude of of the globe and say you know the, the weather patterns are pretty pretty similar. I mean I think that's one of the advantages that we have living in the Midwest. I mean yeah. we, we do. Yeah. Is yeah. if going to Europe, I always say you know it's it's Europe Europe's weather unless you are in the very south of France, you know, um, or you're in Barcelona um, or Nice where the weather is always beautiful. <laughs> it's always beautiful. Um, it's pretty much like ours. 
Yeah. Yeah. And spring, as you, as you mentioned, you know, it's also when the flowers kind of come out. Oh, um, yes. Now, Giverny doesn't open until basically April 1st, right? Monet's Gardens. Uh, yeah, it opens March 31st. March, March 31st. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So definitely worth, um, worth seeing that. So that's something to keep in mind. Summer is hot, hot and humid. Yeah. Um, yes. And it's the peak season. And in August in particular, um, the whole nation of France goes on vacation. So <laughs> a lot of them are going to go to the beach and the nearest beaches to France are right here in this, or to Paris are right here in this area. So it can be kind of busy in the summer. Um, and then fall is, I, I always think, is a gorgeous time to go. Oh. And, you know, some days can be a little chilly, but I'm not a fan of 100 degrees and 100% humidity. So um, yeah, right. I tend to like, I tend no. to like fall. So, if people, if, oh. if, if, you, if people ask me when to travel in Europe, I always say from mid-March to mid-June yep. and from the end of September to New Year's. Yep. Yeah. Because I love I love yeah. Christmas season in Europe. I and love it. Paris just absolutely comes alive in the Christmas season. The light oh and everything are incredible. Yes. So yes. so the basic itinerary here, you have a seven-night cruise, you have a three-night pre-cruise package and pre or post cruise package in San Malo. And then um, is it two nights in the center of Paris and then one night at the airport, right? Uh, if you do the yes, it would okay. be two nights in Paris. And then if you're doing the pre and post, yes. Because if you're doing the, if you are starting in, in in Paris, and going to Le Havre, and you're doing the post Saint Milo, then we TGV back to Paris, uh, Charles de Gaulle. Okay. The last night. So yeah. if you're going, if you're going out towards the ocean, you'll have two night, two two nights in the heart of Paris, um, before the cruise. You'll yes. do the cruise, go to Saint Milo, then go back for one night prior to your departure. Yes. Okay, yes. makes sense because. Getting from downtown to the airport takes a while, so it's nice to be, oh, yeah. nice yeah. to be kind of close. And uh, the TGV, the TGV train is right there at the at Charles yeah. de Gaulle. Very easy, very easy, very easy, very easy. Very easy. Yeah. Um, so you know the other the other kind of commonly asked uh, question that that I'm hearing from people is when is the best time to book my trip? Yep. And I mean. I can share some anecdotes and, and you know you can share some anecdotes, but I think what we're seeing right now is that the 2022 season is very popular and um, the pickings yes. are starting to get a little bit slim in terms of yes. what's available. And yes. even 2023, we're seeing that same thing, right? Yes, because people haven't traveled. You know, they, they've, this is gonna be almost, if they can't, if they don't travel in 21, it'll be two years, two full years that they haven't traveled. And one of the other things that's very, very popular, and think about this, is generational, multi-generational travel, because they want to be with family. And again, you could be looking at the Christmas markets for that. We have a lot of families from Thanksgiving to New Year's, where, you know, Ama Waterways allows four-year-olds. We don't see children during the, you know, from from March to, to Thanksgiving, really. Maybe, a, 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 I, I would say, because we have nothing for them to do. I mean, we don't have yeah, the game room, that. we don't have the climbing wall, we don't have the big swimming pool, <laughs> et cetera. So, yeah. but for the, from Thanksgiving to um, New Year's, we do see children. And it's so much fun to see them because they're, they're in awe of Santa Claus because every time on, during our Christmas markets, we always have Santa Claus. And I guess next month we are going to be talking about Christmas markets. We are in our next month. Yes, I'm so excited about that. Um, and so in, in France, it's Father Christmas, yes. Père Noël. And we are for the first time this year, 2021, we are starting Christmas markets in France. So again, a new a new venue for the for the um, um, the multi generationals. And again. You know, we've got our, um, let me go back to this one, where we're on the um, Colors of Provence. That particular journey, which is starts in Lyon, you could do a pre-Paris, right? And go from Lyon down to um, Avignon, and then you could do Nice. And this one is on the Amacristina, which is our, uh, beautiful, beautiful 
uh, twin balcony ship that we brought over from the Rhine last year in 20. We brought it into, um, oh yeah, we transported it to the, uh, the, the Rhone and she is doing the Rhone for the first time we've got a twin balcony a ship, one of our 443 foot long ships. And again, this is gonna be doing Christmas markets. And I, I love this itinerary from Lyon. And many people will even do um, stay in Lyon on the, you know, you can do that. You can do that with Ted, um, have him book a, a, a beautiful um, hotel in Lyon, yes. And you know, a lot of people don't know Lyon is the culinary capital of France. Oh, oh uh, yes. Where, the, um, where the, the best restaurants and the best French cuisine are in Lyon. So, you uh -huh. know, you have the, you have the kind of the nice, um, you know, seven day cruise plus six night pre and post cruise option in, in along the Seine River. Um, yeah. Or as an alternative, you know, you could do a seven night cruise in Northern France and then hop down and grab a seven night cruise in Southern France and plan some time off in between. Um, yes. You know, that Colors of Provence, the wine harvest time is again, probably mid to mid to late September into early October. And so, um, you know, I, I always tell people that fall is a really good time to go to Europe, but you know, there's there's no bad time to go. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I think, I think we'll just kind of, um, we'll wrap up here in a second, but as you, as you mentioned, things are definitely filling up and, you know, Ama Waterways has a pretty simple pricing model, and that's that the prices are going to be the lowest um, when the season opens for bookings, and as the ships fill up, the, the price can go up a little bit, and the promotions um, become less and less as there are fewer and fewer cabins available. So if you are thinking about um, exploring Paris and Normandy, or if you are thinking about um, doing that and combining it with other cruises, definitely now is the time to be looking for 2022 and 2023. And so yes. all of us here at Travel Leaders are happy to help you make um, make that bookings and make those bookings and make all of your other plans, you know, from flights to transfers and hotels and pre and post cruise packages and walk you through the different choices of shore excursions that are available um, included in your price so that you can have the vacation that you dream of in um, France, which is certainly one of my favorite places to go. Yes. So, Mary Margaret, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate no, you're so welcome. My pleasure. And always, we'll, always we'll a pleasure. We're doing this again in uh, July. And yeah. so, we're doing Christmas in July. We're going to take yes. a look at the Christmas markets and yep. um, watch your inbox for an invitation to that. But Absolutely. thanks so much. Thanks so much for joining us. And thank you. We'll see you soon. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.